Hey, it's Jared. In this video, we're going to be comparing two different Surface devices. We have the Surface Pro 9 and we have the Surface Laptop Studio. These are two Surface devices with kind of different intentions, but both of them do things great in their own way. And they're both really interesting devices to me, which is why I'm talking about them here. Now, I've done an individual review of the Surface Pro 9. I've also compared it to the iPad M2 device, and I've also done a standalone review of the Surface Laptop Studio. So the comparison of the two is really a tale of what you need to get out of your device. Now the Surface Pro 9 is the latest edition of this device. It's new and it comes packed with new features and performances that are absolutely fantastic. And I think it's a great device. It performs well, it's got excellent battery life, and it's a very universal device that you can use for a lot of different purposes. But what really made me want to check out this laptop even though it has been out for a little while now, is the fact that it is something completely different. Microsoft has really been leaning into how do we create a device that is for creative people that has both what you would expect out of a Windows device, but also what you would desire in something that you would use to create. And they've done just that in a device like this. So let's take a look at them as far as what they are hardware wise, and then we'll talk about their performance. So in hardware, hardware, what you're getting in your Surface Pro 9 is a variety of different specs. Now, this is the graphite option, which means that it's not the highest spec option that's available. The graphite and two of the other color options come with not as good of specs as what you can get if you go with the platinum color, which would more match the Surface Studio laptop. So the platinum color can get you an i7 processor, which this is the i7 processor, but the platinum color can also get you up to 32 gigs of RAM and a terabyte of storage. This particular device here has 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage. Over here on this device, we also can get an i7 processor. And with that, we can get also up to 32 gigs of RAM. We can get up to two terabytes of storage, and we can also get an NVIDIA RTX 3050 Ti GPU in this device, which is what it has. This device is fully specced out, and it is the highest performing option that they have available. So let's walk around the hardware of both of these devices. The Surface Pro is detachable from its keyboard, and it has a kickstand in the back, meaning that it can fully articulate and operate as a tablet standalone from the keyboard, making it a very portable device that is easy to carry around with you, whether you need it to operate like a laptop or you want it to be more of a creative device. The built-in kickstand on the back allows for a real deep articulation. You could basically lay this down almost flat and put it at any angle that makes sense. It's sturdy enough to where you can use the pen on it and push down a little bit and draw and rest your hand anywhere that you need to, to write or draw or annotate or do whatever you're gonna do with that Surface Pen. A fantastic design there. I wish that there was some sort of rubber on the back of the kickstand so that it's not kind of scraping. You know, you go to a coffee shop that has more of a rigid table and I feel like I'm just kind of scraping away at the back of that kickstand, but nonetheless, it's, it's the way the design is. We have two USB type C ports and then on the right hand side, we have the Surface Connect, which is for power. And then of course, if you have the Surface Dock, you can connect that for one point of connection for charging and expandability, which is a must if you're going to go with a device like this and use it for more than just a tablet and a laptop. If you want to use it at your desk, you for sure need that. I also have the keyboard, which has the built-in slot here for the Surface Pen, which is great. I love how it stores like that. And with magnetic, I can just prop this up and get a little bit more of an angle out of the keyboard or go completely flat with it by laying it down as a flat keyboard like you would get out of most of your tablet type devices. The pen is super responsive and of course it works on the Surface Studio laptop as well. So I purchased this pen with the keyboard combination for the Surface Pro 9. Of course you can purchase the Surface Pen, the Slim Edition, which is what this one is for the laptop as well. What we also get on this Surface Pro 9 is a very slim form factor. So when we fold this device up and I'll just unplug it from the charging cable here, 
we get a very slim line device that is thinner than an iPad Pro in a Magic Keyboard case and a little bit smaller all around with just a little bit of a raised hump here, which is of course is where the pen lies. So a very nice and slim device, albeit a little bit limited on the ports with two USB type C ports, as I mentioned. Moving over to the Studio laptop, on the right hand side of the Surface Studio laptop, we have the Surface Connect and we have a headphone jack. The Surface Pro 9 does not have a headphone jack. I have this connected to the dock and the dock is a great accessory, which I think is super useful for either one of these devices. The dock adds two USB type C ports to the front and then a additional two from the back that can be used for displays. So USB supported displays. And then we have USB type A ports, two of those and an ethernet jack on the back for you to connect to internet. So the dock whether you're on either one of these devices is almost a necessity, I would say, for either one of them. Moving over to the left-hand side of the device, we also have two USB Type-C ports. So when it comes to ports, really all that we're gaining on the Surface Studio laptop is a headphone jack. You're not really gaining anything else. We talked about the articulation that we get on the kickstand of this device. What's unique about this is that we can pop the display off the back and it's kind of on this hinge, and I can rotate this all the way around to the back and it magnetically attaches, which is pretty crazy. So you can flip this thing around and show somebody what you're working on, or I can flip this and slide it down and it snaps right into place just below the keyboard. And now I have kind of like a tablet, essentially a very thick tablet, and I can go down even flatter at any angle that I want. Although if it's not snapped into position, it's a little bouncy, but then it can snap into place and essentially it is a big tablet and it's a thick tablet. I think this is a neat feature, especially for a laptop that has the performance that this has. What you're gonna gain out of the difference between these two devices really comes down to how you plan to use them. So as I put this back into its laptop mode, it switches back into uh, traditional windows, just as this device does when you are utilizing it with a pen versus utilizing it with a keyboard. And Windows 11 works really well on both of these devices. Now, as far as performance goes, there's a few different tests that I did. First of all, I ran Geekbench 6, which just recently came out. It's the latest version of Geekbench and was really pleasantly surprised at how well the Surface 9 performed when it came to the CPU performance. The CPU performance was very close with both of these devices. Granted, the Surface Pro 9 has the latest 12th gen CPU and the Surface Studio laptop has 11th gen CPU. And so there's a big difference there. And I didn't think it was gonna be that big of a difference, but this device being as small and compact as it is, performs equivalently with the CPU as the Surface Laptop Studio. But performance doesn't end there because the Surface Laptop Studio has a graphics card. As I mentioned before, it has its own graphics card, a 3050 Ti, and you're going to get insane graphics performance out of that over what you have with the built-in 12th gen chip on the Surface 9. So the differences there depend on what you're going to be doing as far as work on both of these devices. Now, when it comes to everyday tasks that you might be doing on a type of device like this, you're going to see very similar performance out of both of them. The first time I ran the benchmark tests, it was with Geekbench 5, and Geekbench 5 showed much better scores on the Surface 9 Pro than on the Surface Laptop Studio. But with Geekbench 6, it's a little bit more of a direct comparison. They're both pretty much the same. I don't know necessarily what the difference is between the different versions, but from what I read Geekbench 6 is supposed to better represent everyday use as opposed to just raw horsepower. And so I see basically the same scores out of both of these devices. Go for compact if you're doing everyday tasks and stuff like that. But when it comes down to heavier lifting, it depends on what you're doing. I do a lot of photo editing, so I loaded up Adobe Lightroom and did an export of 56 images on both of these devices. And surprisingly, this device, the Surface Pro 9, outperformed the laptop studio significantly. It was done well before the Surface Laptop was, and that has to do with the 12th generation chip and the more performance that I'm getting out of that 12th 
generation chip as opposed to the 11th. But when it comes to using applications or games that are graphically intense, the 3050 Ti is going to destroy this device. The display on this device is a 60 hertz versus 120 hertz. And so when I did some gaming tests, I unleashed my kids on both of these devices and let them play some Fortnite on them. On the Surface 9, I was able to get sometimes up to 60 frames per second, but usually somewhere between 30 and 40 frames per second sometimes dipping down into the 20s. Whereas on the Surface Studio laptop, I was able to get almost 120 frames per second nonstop with it dipping down in some of the more intense scenarios where it really had to stretch that 3050. But connected to power, both of these devices can play games and can do it okay. But if you're gonna be utilizing the devices for games or perhaps for video editing, the Surface Studio laptop is gonna outperform hands down because of that 3050 Ti, even though we have an older generation CPU in this device. It's that processing power that you're gonna get out of a dedicated GPU that you just don't have in the Surface Pro 9. So which one of these devices should you choose based on what you're trying to achieve? Well, the Surface Pro 9 is hands down the best device when it comes to portability. It's very small, it packs up tight. You have a lot of functionality there with Windows 11. The 12th gen Intel chip is absolutely fantastic. Albeit, I haven't tried the i5 or the Microsoft SQ3 chip that's available on the Surface 9. I know that the i7 packs a punch and has a ton of performance for everyday computing and usage that makes up the majority of what I do when I'm not editing photos or video or letting my kids play some games, the Surface Pro 9 is absolutely what I need to get the job done. And its portability is just icing on the cake, being able to pack this thing up and take it anywhere without adding a lot of weight to whatever I'm carrying. With the Surface Laptop Studio, this provides the performance that I need to do the heavier lifting tasks that I find myself needing to do throughout the week, whether it's editing photos, and even though this exported photos faster than the laptop studio, the editing process of going through and applying effects and making changes, having that graphics performance that can boost that in that instance makes the laptop studio a better performer when it comes to actually doing the work. Exporting doesn't always tell the whole tale. It's how does it respond when you're doing the editing and all of that stuff. Yes, that leans on CPU, but it also leans on GPU a lot as well. And when it comes to rendering, photo applications like Lightroom tend to lean on the CPU where editing and rendering out video lean a lot more on the GPU. And the GPU of the laptop studio is hands down much better than what comes in the Surface Pro 9. So performance wise, because I do a lot more with creative work, I would definitely utilize the Surface laptop a lot more than I would utilize the Surface Pro 9, simply because this would slow me down a lot. Now on battery, we have a lot larger of a battery as well in this device. Microsoft states that you'd get about 15 and a half hours of battery life out of this device. Granted, that's a blanket statement. When there's lots of different configurations, the i7 is going to utilize a lot more battery than the i5 or even the Microsoft SQ3 chip. And over here with this device, we have up to 18 hours and that also will vary based on the configuration and how you're using it. If you're on battery life and you're using the Surface Laptop Studio and it's utilizing that GPU, that graphics performance, it's gonna suck the battery life down a lot faster and you're gonna lose a lot of what it states is that 18 hours of battery life. What it comes down to is how you're utilizing the device, what kind of performance you need, and also the portability of the device as well. Both of these have amazing displays, one with a little bit higher of a refresh rate, but they're both amazing displays. They both perform really well in their own ways, as we've talked about, and they both have screens that articulate in a lot of different ways that is great for those of us that are going to use the Surface Pen to create or edit or manipulate documents on our devices. So fantastic devices all around. I really like how Microsoft is kind of stretching and trying different things with these different devices. I hope that this isn't the end of the line for the Surface Studio laptop and that they do bring a refresh to it, perhaps maybe going up to a 40 series graphics card and bringing us the 12th generation chip in the future. I think that would just make this device hands down one of the best Windows devices that are out there just because of what it's 
it's capable of doing. But the Surface Pro 9 being an amazing portable device with decent power and battery life that can basically accomplish majority of the things that most of us are going to do, make it a valid option as well. So it comes down to portability and good performance, good battery life over raw performance, not so portable, but having that additional performance for heavier lifting tasks. That's the difference mainly between these two different devices and why you would go with one over the other. If you have any thoughts or questions, definitely leave them down in the comment section below. If there's anything I can do to help clarify or help you make a decision, definitely ask down below. Make sure to use the links in the description when checking out pricing and options for both of these devices and subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up, and I hope to see you back in another one soon. Take care.